welcome back to Idology, your weekly American Idol recap show that stands for the vision of love. Chris Allen fans, you know what I'm talking about. We are here with season six standout Melinda Doolittle. Melinda, thanks for being with us again today. Thanks for having me. Top Nine Night, I think, was one of the best overall performance nights we've seen on Idol. And yet five out of nine performances got standing ovations and not even the right ones in some cases. I, I just feel like they sort of negated the meaning of a standing O on this show. I just remember back in the days of Simon, I kind of sound like I'm old now, but back <laughs> right. in the days of Simon, when a standing ovation happened maybe twice a season, you know, minus maybe Paula standing up or something. It was one of those things that you would like strive for. Four out of five guys got standing ovations. The fifth guy, the one who didn't get the standing ovation, got mentioned in every other critique. Colton threw down a gauntlet. And then Elise closes the show with the strongest performance of the night. And Jennifer Lopez's response is, I didn't want to get up! You stood for he June? <laughs> Look, he was fine this week. I think Jimmy was right. He kind of was just at a point where he was outclassed vocally and I think it was the right week for him to go home, but that was not a standing O performance. You're gonna give standing ovations to Heejun, then Jessica Sanchez should have had a standing ovation. She doesn't have a Y chromosome. There is that. But let's talk about these standing O's. Okay, let's say okay. if we were going to give two out for the night, be a little less generous than the judges, who would they go to? I would say the first one has to go to Elise. Oh. Her performance of Whole Lot of Love was amazing. <laughs> Although, frankly, I kind of liked Edge of Seventeen even better. And the days go by like a sand in the wind, in the well, web that is my home, I begin again. Elise is a beast, and I say that in, in the best form of that word. I really haven't heard anything that she can't do. Just her tone, her delivery, she's just seasoned, and she's so great at it. When she covered her face with her hand, <laughs> that might have been the best move I've ever seen in my life. I am no, doing that in my I, next show. I'm singing the whole chorus just like this. It was I mean, crazy. A whole lot of love on Idol was Adam Lambert's song, but you don't have to love one and not the other. Adam right. Lambert was sort of like club you over the head and drag you back to the cave. It was just oh, yeah. total aggression. Elise was awesome. sort of like in the cave entrance, sort of summoning and beckoning you in and sort of seducing you to come in. It was just a different energy. And the things that she did with her voice during it, there's one part, again, I know I brought up sort of that Middle Eastern flair that she had on Vienna. And again, on Whole Lot of Love, she sort of brought that that vibe into it when her voice just sort of goes like it's like a fan dance or something crazy is going on. We could really devote the entire 10 minutes to Elise. But who would be your second standing O of the night? Joshua Ledet. I kind of like to call that performance Joshua Ledet. This time it's personal. It didn't bother me at all yes. that he broke on that note or that he wiped his nose. The nose wipe was a little much for me. However, I know what it feels like to be on that stage and feel like you're giving everything you can and people maybe not getting you all the time. I can't feel and it just, it broke him in that moment. And I loved that. My second standing over the week would definitely go to Jessica. If we'd seen that performance done by Colton or Philip, the judges wouldn't have been able to shut up about the word artistry. But because she's a 16-year-old teenage girl, they don't really give her that kind of credit. Damn, Jessica's going dark on us this week, and I, I loved it. You really can't sing it any more perfect than she did. Right. I will say that if you listen to Beyonce's slowed down version of that song that she does live in a lot of her shows, it sounds exactly the same. So I could see them maybe not crediting her with artistry necessarily, but with perfection, they need to credit her. In her defense though, how many people in the Idol audience have seen Beyonce live or have seen Beyonce's live version? Not that many. Most people know that radio version, so I feel You're like right. Jessica, you know, applause right. for you. I thought it was a little curious on results night that Jimmy Iovine basically made Jessica and Holly an either or proposition. It's gonna come down to comparing Holly and Jessica. No one said that about Lauren and Scotty last year and they were the country teenagers. Right. Although I will say Holly's really gonna have to up her game if she's going to go past seventh or eighth place in this competition. She picked the wrong song 
every damn week. She picks giant diva ballads, tries every to week. out diva the original diva, and then we get her on the Madonna medley with Borderline, and she was great. It was she like she was awesome. I would vote for that girl. Why would you do a Carrie Underwood song? You know better. If she doesn't know better though, she is sitting in a room with Jimmy Iovine. What kind of mentor or mentoring allows this to happen? She might as well sing like an Alice Cooper song and bite the head <laughs> off a bat because neither one of them are gonna win her any new fans and they have to know that. If you really give a crap about getting the best out of these kids, don't let her sing Jesus Take the Wheel. Like take the wheel away from her. And also the staging of that was so thuddingly literal, the snow falling. I expected a car to spin out on the stage when they got to that part of the verse and then like the hand of God to come down and like right the car. It was just, come on. While we're on the subject of either or, you know, Jessica or Holly, Colton or Philip, this week at least. I gotta give it to Colton. I know that he had maybe a couple of pitch problems at the beginning, but just the feeling behind it, the fact that he's not scared to just get up there and say, this is who I am, I, I kind of respect that. I'd give this week to Philip just because I felt like he was in it. It's still rain, it's still rain. I just feel like his voice is a little more distinctive than Colton's. I think that's one thing where I'm holding back from jumping aboard the Colton bandwagon. He's hitting his notes. He knows who he is as an artist. His yeah. jacket this week was amazing. Oh. If I could work a white jacket, which I can't, like I'm wearing a gray sweat jacket from Old Navy. <laughs> Philip is wearing a pair of pants that I wouldn't wear to paint the bathroom. I promise you, if Philip and Colton would like split the difference, they would have the perfect pair of pants. We are disagreeing on two contestants this week. I'm gonna allow you to bring up the first one. Who were you not on board with this week? <clears throat> well, Michael, um, <laughs> it wasn't obviously just me because <gasps> this particular contestant oh <laughs> ended up in the bottom third. Stop Maybe Skylar like almost losing it and stuff was not what the song completely needed. You and my own mother. <laughs> I'm like seriously considering breaking up with my mother because she's not on the Skylar train. <laughs> I was just into it and I, I agreed with JLo. The Skylar part of the show is like unbridled, can't keep it in a can energy. <laughs> when she goes like this, I just, I want to go to her concert now. <laughs> And I don't care that the song isn't rangy because not every song has to be rangy. Okay, I'm gonna let it go after I say this one thing. <laughs> <laughs> the first time that I saw Skylar like kind of lose it and fist pump and go through all of that, I loved it. Now that it's kind of become a norm for her, I'm just kind of like, okay, she's probably gonna do that every song. So then it's not quite as exciting for me. I think it's only the second time she's done that. You know, okay. she had the Whitney Houston ballad. She had sort yeah. of the mid-tempo Bonnie yeah. Raitt song, and now she's back to... So when she does fast songs, that's what she's gonna do. I'm okay with that. While we're on the subject of disagreement, can we discuss DeAndre Brackensick? Because to me, oh, can. I mean, honestly, it was like someone had opened the red doors on Jessica's set and bad things came out. <laughs> I can't accuse him of not hitting his notes, because I think he did, but I just felt like it was a lot of holleration and, and shrillness signifying nothing. I don't think that he completely connected with the lyrics. However, that is almost an impossible song to sing. So connection or no connection, he nailed the song itself. There were just moments of it where it was sort of like an owl was disemboweling a prairie dog. Sometimes when you cry, it's not pretty. And sometimes Eric Benet might come on the show because it'll boost his iTunes sales. I just thought it was really weird that Jayla was like, vote for this kid. I need to hear this voice some more. <laughs> a few more weeks for me. I'd like him around till sixth place. Yeah, for really, a few more weeks. She That's didn't stand to the oh. end. Loved that. She's a clever one, that J-Lo. Watch, watch her every word, you know? She, yeah, I know. There's like subtext in everything she says. There has to be subtext in what she says, because Randy, it's like, you know. Constructive criticism. Straight out of the cave, so. 